Assalamu alaikum guys, hope you're doing well. Today, if you want to see how I made these frozen parathas, they're so tasty and crispy and delicious. Keep on watching all the video and you'll have get nice tips and tricks to how to make them so crispy. I hope you enjoy this video, keep on watching. So we're gonna make the dough first. I've got three cups of plain flour in, a, in the stand mix. If you haven't got a stand mix, you could totally do it by hand. I'll use this cup for the measurements. And I'm gonna put a teaspoon of salt in here. So we're gonna start this just on a number one. I'm gonna mix the salt in first, and then I'm gonna start adding the water a bit at a time. We're just gonna put, eyeball it and see how much the water, how much more water does it need and just add it to accordingly. So we're going to let this mix and then if you need some more water then I'll add some more. Every flower bee is different guys so just keep on it. We want a nice and soft dough. Not too thick and not too thin. Just a medium chapati flower dough. Let's this, I'm just gonna put it on the number two now, setting. I think you'll need some more water, so I'm just gonna add some more. I'm gonna run this on number two for about a couple of minutes and then see if it needs more water. So as you can see, we still need some more water. I'm gonna put, add more, just about a couple of tablespoons each time. It looks, it looks like it's coming together now. That's it guys, I'm not gonna add any more water to this now. I'm just gonna let it mix for about three, four minutes until all the flour has become into a round bowl. So guys, the dough is ready now, as you can see, it's gum into a more nice big round dough ball. So I'm gonna switch this off and we're gonna remove the, we're gonna remove this dough now and put it in a different bowl. As you can see, it's nice and smooth. Just dip your hand, hand in water and then just with that, bring all the dough together. So we're gonna get this bowl and just with a damp hand, just bring the dough together. As you can see, it's nice and smooth. It's not too soft and not too hard. Just right, turn it around. And just put a tiny bit of water all over it. I'm gonna put cling film on this. Make sure you cover it properly, otherwise it'll dry up. I'm gonna put cling film and let this rest for about a good half an hour to one hour. And then we'll continue with the recipe. Before making the parantas, I'm gonna cut some of this greaseful paper to put between the parantas. So I'm just gonna lay this plate on top of this. That's the size I'm making. And I'm gonna just draw around it with a pen or a pencil. Just a light, so you know where it is. Just lightly, just with a pen, make a mark. And now I'm gonna just cut this. So I'm gonna cut a few of these and then I'll show you what we do next. So I've cut some rounds of the greaseful paper and this is the freezer bag I'm gonna use. It just fits perfectly in there. And now we're gonna start making the parameters. I've got a large tray here. I'll just put some plain flour in the middle. I'm just gonna start making some dough balls. So just put a bit of dry flour on it, on your hands. We're not making really big ones. Just gonna make them nice and dainty. You can make them large. You can make large branches if you want to, but I'm just gonna make them sort of a medium size and that will be perfect. Just gonna put some plain flour lightly, dust it. I'm just going to lightly dust the outside of the tray. So I'm going to put these dough balls on there and I don't want them to stick 
to the tray. So I'm going to make these dough balls and then we're going to go to the next. I'm starting with four dough balls first because I don't want them to dry. And I've covered the rest of the flour and put that on the side. And let's start making the prontas. You will need some melted butter or ghee if you prefer and a pastry brush. We're going to take the first dough ball and just put some flour on it. And with your fingers, the way you make chapati, just flatten it out. And I'm going to dip it again in flour. And we're going to roll this out. First, I'm going to roll this as large as, as I can. So I need to get the layers in the printer, so I'm going to roll it out really thinly first. You don't have to be perfect and round at this moment because we're just going to layer the printer first. So try to get as thin as you can. Once the dough balls are rested, it's much easier to just work with it because plain flour just shrinks back if you don't let it rest. So the more you rest them, the easier it is to handle. With your hands, you can do it like a mixed mix patty, just smash, make it larger with your hands. As you can see, it's quite thin now and that's perfect. Now we're going to brush the butter on the surface of the dough. Make sure you get all the edges as well. A little bit more. Butter makes it flaky guys, so you just need to add quite a good amount. Be generous and with now I'm going to put a tiny bit of plain flour on here. This makes the Oh my god, I'm asking. I'm going to put this plain flour on the butter now. This will help me to give it nice layers and now I'm going to just start putting the dough together. So we fold it one twice that side, twice this side. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of more butter on this layer and same again just tiny bit of flour goes on top of that and now just bring that together and start stretching this dough out Now what we're going to do is lay it this way and now I'm going to start slowly bringing this together just as such. It doesn't matter if it's, it doesn't look really neat, uh, we'll fix that soon. Well, if there's air bubbles, just press it so it comes out. You get something like this. Now what you do is tuck this underneath and from the top just press it down. That's it. Can you see the layers? Lovely layers in there. Now I'm going to make the rest of them and let these rest now for about 10 minutes and then we're going to roll them out. So these four dough balls have been buttered. This is the first one. I'm going to take that. As you can see it's quite soft now because it's been resting. And same again, just lightly press it with your fingers. So easy when it's rested, it's much easier to handle. I'm just gonna put some more of this plain flour on here. And I'm gonna start rolling this out. As you can see the butter and the layers as well. If it starts sticking, just lightly 
flour it again and then start rolling. And then the side and then roll it. Make sure you get all the side edges as well and they're not too thick. That's fine guys, I think this will be big enough. It's about 20 centimeters as you can see, and that's same as the width of the paper. So the first sheet I'm gonna put on underneath the branter. As you can see, perfectly fits. And I'm gonna roll the other ones out as well. I'm gonna rolling the second one out now. So it's much easier when, I keep on saying the door's been rested, but that's the trick of this. And all the layers are showing and when you cook them the layers will just puff up tiny bit more of plain flour plain flour on there As you can see, that's 20 centimeters again. And I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna put another grease book paper on the one I made before, and then add this one to the top of it. Oh, oops. There you go. And you just make the rest of, of them, and then we're gonna pop them in the freezer. I've made all the printers now, guys. At the end as well, I'm gonna put one of the round grease book paper so we got i've got a freezer bag that perfectly fits these parameters so i'm just gonna put these in there let's put it on one hand and then slowly make sure guys it is nice and flat and when, even when you put it in the freezer, make sure you put it in a flat surface. When they're nice and flat in the freezer, they'll be nicely frozen all the way through. And now I'm going to try to take all the air out of the bag and then seal it really well so you don't get any ice crystals on the branches. Guys, these are totally frozen now. I've taken them out of the freezer. As you can see, They don't get stuck to each other because of the, the grease book paper. And now I'm gonna cook these. I've been heating this pan up and I'm just gonna add the pronto to this. And now I'm gonna put it onto a, like a medium heat, not too high because I don't want them to burn and I want them to cook from all the way through. So I'm gonna start cooking these. It doesn't take any time for the pronto to go nice and soft, as you can see. It's just gonna take a couple more minutes to go brown on one side, then we're gonna turn it over. Let's turn this over now. And then just gonna add a tiny bit of butter on top, so it makes it extra crispy. So just spread the butter out all over the pronto. And I'm gonna turn this over. And put a tiny bit on this side as well. And I'm gonna cook this until it goes nice and golden brown. As you can see guys, all the layers are showing through and it's got a nice golden brown. Don't they look better than shop bought printers? You should really try this recipe for your family and friends. They would really enjoy it. We're going to cook the other side and then I'll show you how it looks. Guys, this is completely ready now. I'm going to take this off and put it on this plate. And I'm going to make the rest of them and then I'll show you how we serve these. So guys, here it is. I've just made an omelette. I've just put a bit of onion and uh, green chilli and some coriander in there and i made some chole and aloo as you can see it's just a simple recipe and with the correct chai i hope you enjoyed this video guys i made a lot put a lot of effort in this and it's great for ramadan or any occasion or for a sunday brunch or anything you would like any time of the day if you want to eat this you can make it it's so simple and easy just make them in advance and freeze them 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care of yourselves. Allah Hafiz.